Welcome back to our Sailrite Workbench. This is the third video in a series we're calling Learning to Sew. Today, we're gonna to be talking about seams. So whether you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher, this is the perfect place for you. We will walk you through popular types of seams, discuss their benefits and potential drawbacks, and show you how to make them. We're gonna show you how to do these seams on our Ultrafeet LSC, but you can follow along on any sewing machine. First, we're gonna start with an overlapping seam. An overlapping seam is the simplest and most straightforward seam to make. It is often used in sail making and canvas projects like awnings, canopies, and some covers. To demonstrate, we have two pieces of fabric. Since we're using synthetic fabric, we've cut the raw edges with a hot knife to prevent fraying. Something to keep in mind when you try these seams is seam allowance. Your seam allowance is how much fabric you want to use in your seam. For this overlapping seam, we will mark a half inch seam allowance on one of our panels. Next, we're gonna baste these panels together using 3 4 inch basting tape. Basting tape helps hold the panels in place and when sewn through, can increase water resistance. Now, we'll lay the second panel on top of the seam line we marked and we'll ensure it's basted down well using our canvas patterning ruler. We're gonna be using a six millimeter stitch length for this seam. So we're gonna line our fabric underneath the presser foot about an eighth inch away from this raw edge. When sewing, it can be helpful to line the fabric up with a part of the presser foot to keep the seam straight. So we're gonna sew a line, locking our stitches at the beginning and the end. Now we're gonna cut our threads on both ends. Then we're gonna flip our fabric over. Now we're gonna sew our second stitch. So we're gonna line our fabric assembly up about an eighth inch away from the unfinished edge, just like the other side. And we're gonna sew a line of stitches, locking the beginning and end of our stitches. Now we have our overlap seam. Let's cover some of the properties of an overlapping seam. It uses fabric efficiently because the seam allowance is equal to the seam width, and the seam provides 90% of the fabric strength. Some downsides are that this type of seam isn't very water resistant in comparison to other seam techniques. Also, no matter which way the assembly lies, the top threads will be exposed to the sun, which shortens the thread life. Next, let's talk about the semi-flat felt seam. This is a popular seam with many professional canvas workers because it provides a clean, finished look while also only exposing one stitch line to the fabric's outside. That stitch is called the top stitch. You'll see this seam on covers, bimini tops, dodgers, and upholstery seating. Again, we've cut our synthetic fabric with a hot knife to prevent fraying. To start, let's mark our seam allowances. We'll measure half an inch on both fabric panels, totaling one inch of seam allowance. We also want to consider if our fabric has a right side and a wrong side, also known as an outside and an inside. Our fabric is reversible, so it doesn't have a right and wrong side, but for demonstration purposes, we'll mark the outside and inside so that you can follow along. We're gonna want the outside of this panel to face the outside of the other fabric panel. Now let's use our basting tape again and baste the panels in place. We're gonna be using a magnetic sewing guide to guide our stitch and keep it about a half inch away from the edge of our fabric. So we're gonna take our magnetic sewing guide and put it on our needle plate at the half inch mark. Now we're gonna place our fabric under the foot and sew a line of stitches. Once that stitch is complete, we can take it from under the presser foot, cut our threads, 
Now we can unfold the pieces. Now the two outside panels should be on the top and the two inside panels will be on the bottom. So we can take our canvas patterning ruler and you'll wanna just crease this fabric down. So now that we've folded it over our previous stitch, it should be hidden and there'll be this flap. We wanna make sure that we're sewing through this flap, so we're gonna remove our magnetic sewing guide and use our presser foot as a guide instead. So we're gonna line our fabric under the foot. As we sew this, we wanna make sure to gently pull the fabric apart so that we sew the fabric consistently and evenly. So we're gonna lock our stitches at the beginning. And then we can keep sewing. So now that we've locked our stitch on the end, we can go ahead and take this out. This is what it should look like when the seam is done. You'll see a single top stitch and then you'll see two stitches on the back. The semi-flat felt seam is popular because it is nearly waterproof and exceptionally strong. Its strength is equal to 95% of the strength of the fabric. And because one stitch is hidden from the sun, even if the top stitch fails, the other usually won't. Its only downside is how efficiently the fabric is used. It uses two times the seam width as a seam allowance. So a half inch seam will take up one inch of fabric. Next, we have a full flat felt seam, which is the most intricate of canvas work seams. It leaves no raw edges exposed, so you can use scissors to cut your fabric without worrying about fraying. It gives a finished edge on both sides of the fabric and has a hidden stitch. Again, let's start by considering whether your fabric has a right and wrong side. So we're gonna mark the inside and outside for demonstration purposes. We'll have one panel with the outside facing up and the other with the inside facing up. Then make a line measuring half inch from the fabric's raw edge on both panels. We're gonna put basting tape underneath the half inch line we marked on the outside surface panel. Then we'll baste the panels together with both outside surfaces facing one another. The raw edge of the top panel should align with the line we marked on the bottom panel. Again, we're gonna be using our canvas patterning ruler to compress the fabric into the basing tape for a strong hold. Next, we're gonna sew right on the half inch line on this top panel. So this stitch is gonna be a half inch away from the top panel and an inch away from the edge of the bottom panel. Now we'll take basting tape and apply it to the half inch lip of the bottom panel. Next, fold it over the top panel's edge. Then place another piece of basting tape on top of that fold and fold the top panel over it. We can use our canvas patterning ruler again to crease it well. Now we have our inside surfaces facing up and we're gonna put it under the foot and sew about an eighth inch away from this folded edge. So once we've locked our seams, we have a full flat felt seam. Let's talk about some properties of a full flat felt seam. This seam is by far the strongest, equal to 100% fabric strength, is nearly waterproof, and has a hidden stitch. Its only drawbacks are that it's pretty labor intensive and it uses a lot of fabric to create the seam. It uses three times the seam width to create this seam. So a half inch seam will take an inch and a half of fabric. If you don't mind the extra labor, time, and a little bit more fabric used, this is a great seam for canvas work. 
Now, as a bonus, we're gonna show you a fourth seam that's a little bit more technically advanced. It is called a French seam, but it is also referred to as a double top stitch. It is commonly found in bow and auto upholstery applications that use leather, faux leather, or vinyl. It not only adds visual appeal to your upholstery, but strength as well. To start, we have two fabric panels and a piece of polyester binding. The binding helps provide the strength of the seam. We'll take two fabric panels and have both the outside or right sides of the fabric facing each other. Take our two fabric panels and we have both the outside or the right sides of our fabric facing each other. So we're gonna be using our magnetic sewing guide again to ensure that we have an accurate half inch seam. So we're gonna line it up under the foot. Again, ensure that you back stitch. When you sew this seam, make sure to take your time to ensure that the edges of the fabric line up exactly. Then we're gonna back stitch at the end. So now that the first stitch is finished, let's unfold the panels and then you'll see that the inside or wrong side should be facing up and you'll have this little flap in the middle. So we're gonna take this back to our table to add some binding. We are gonna create a couple top stitches on either side of the first stitch. To do that, we must flatten out these two flanges and attach our binding. We'll use basting tape to do so. When attaching the binding, it is very important that these flaps are flattened. Now we're gonna take this piece over to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew along either side of our original stitch using the edge of our presser foot as a guide. Once we've done one side, we'll repeat the process on the other. Now we have a French seam. Using heavier threads or even contrasting colors can look the best for this type of seam. Now let's go over some properties of a French seam. Pros of this seam type are that it's strong, especially if you add a fabric or webbing backer. It's also an attractive seam, giving your projects a high-end, polished look. Drawbacks are that the seam isn't very water resistant. Also, the two top stitches are exposed to the sun and are vulnerable to abrasion. But if you won't be using this seam in an outdoor application and you don't mind putting a little extra work into an attractive seam, then the French seam will be a perfect seam for your project. Now you know how to sew four different types of seams. If you've missed any of the other videos in this Learning to Sew series, we've linked the playlist in the description below, so make sure to check that out. If you want a project to start your sewing journey, we have plenty of DIY project videos for beginners and more advanced sewers. Make sure to subscribe to our two YouTube channels, Sailrite Workbench and Sailrite DIY, because you won't want to miss out on the hundreds of free video resources there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time for part four of our Learning to Sew series.